Odin's ravens, Hugin and Munin. In Old Norse religion, Hugin and Munin are a pair of ravens that fly all over the world, Midgard, and bring information to the god, Allfather, Odin. Hugin and Munin are attested in the poetic Edda, compiled in the 13th century from earlier traditional sources. In the poetic Edda, a disguised Odin expresses that he fears that they may not return from their daily flights. The prose Edda explains that Odin is referred to as Hrafnagutha, or Raven God, due to his association with Hugin and Munin. Examples of artifacts that may depict Odin with one of the ravens include migration period golden bracteates, Vendel era helmet plates, a pair of identical Germanic Iron Age bird shaped brooches, Viking Age objects depicting a moustached man wearing a helmet, and a portion of the 10th or 11th century Thorwald's cross. Hugin and Munin's role as Odin's messengers have been linked to shamanic practices. The Norse raven banner, general raven symbolism among the Germanic peoples. In the Heimskringla book Inglinga Saga, an account of the life of Odin is provided. Chapter 7 describes that Odin had two ravens and upon these ravens he bestowed the gift of speech. These ravens flew all over the land and brought him information, causing Odin to become very wise in his lore. In the third grammatical treatise, an anonymous verse is recorded that mentions the ravens flying from Odin's shoulders. Hugin seeked hanged men and Munin slain bodies. The verse reads, two ravens flew from Nikkar's shoulders Hugin to be hanged and Munin to the slain. The migration period of the 5th and 6th centuries, gold bracteats feature a depiction of a human figure above a horse holding a spear and flanked by one of more often two birds. The presence of the birds has led to the iconographic identification of the human figure as the god Odin flanked by Hugin and Munin. Like Snorri's prose Edda description of the ravens, a bird is sometimes depicted at the ear of the human or at the ear of the horse. Bracteats have been found in Denmark, Sweden, Norway, and in smaller numbers, England and areas south of Denmark. Austrian Germanist Rudolf Simek states that these Bracteats may depict Odin and his ravens healing a horse and may indicate that the birds were originally not simply his battlefield companions but also Odin's helpers in his veterinary function. The Osberg tapestry fragments discovered within the Viking Age Osberg ship burial in Norway feature a scene containing two black birds hovering over a horse, possibly originally leading a wagon. A portion of Thorwald's cross on the Isle of Man depicts a bearded human holding a spear downward at the wolf, his right foot in his mouth and a large bird on his shoulder. This depiction has been interpreted as Odin, with a raven or eagle at his shoulder, being consumed by the monstrous wolf Fenrir during the events of Ragnarok. Bernd Heinrich theorizes that Hugin and Munin, along with Odin and his wolves Jerry and Freki, reflect a symbiosis observed in the natural world among ravens, wolves, and humans on the hunt. Quote, in a biological symbiosis, one organism typically shows up some weakness or deficiency of the others. As in such a symbiosis, Odin, the father of all humans and gods, though in human form was imperfect by himself. As a separate entity, he lacked depth perception, being one-eyed. 
and was apparently also uninformed and forgetful, but his weaknesses were compensated by his ravens, Hugen, mind, and Munin, memory, who were part of him. They perched on his shoulders and reconnoitered to the ends of the earth each day to return in the evening and tell him the news. He also had two wolves at his side, and the man-god Raven Wolf Association was like one single organism in which the ravens were the eyes, mind and memory, and the wolves the providers of meat and nourishment. As god, Odin was the ethereal part, he only drank wine and spoke only in poetry. I wondered if the Odin myth was a metaphor that playfully and poetically encapsulates ancient knowledge of our prehistoric past as hunters in association with two allies to produce a powerful hunting alliance. It would reflect a past that we have long forgotten and whose meaning has been obscured and badly frayed as we abandon our hunting cultures to become herders and agriculturists to whom ravens act as competitors.